Hello my precious cinnamon rolls, my name is Fofo and I'm here back again playing Loren the Amazon Princess and I'm having to record post commentary again because Audacity is messing up. It, it didn't save my recording again. So what I'd basically done, I'd done some grinding uh, which got my fame up to 48 which gave me a discount from the shop so I can sell a bunch of stuff and buy new equipment. Just going through what I've currently got. Those braces are meant for a mage, so they're not used to Eleanor. And we don't have Mirth in the party at the moment because she's doing a divination ritual thing. So Draco gets those braces. Also got a couple of quarter staffs from fighting some necromancers while I was grinding. So he gets some of those. So get everybody up to level 5 except Mirth who wasn't in the party. Sell everything that we don't need. Most of this stuff is mostly useful to archers since it's the elven village. So we've got a new bow for Eleanor, the master's crossbow. Sell our old one. Uh, got a hunter's necklace again for Eleanor. When I'm thinking about it, for Eleanor. Got a vest for Draco. Some brace braces of the orcs for. Loren. Sell the old stuff. Weapons aren't that great, so. And uh, of course, Loren's already got a magic sword, so we'll get another necklace for Loren. Another hunter's necklace. And now we've only got 68 gold, so we can't buy anything else anyway. We need to get a ring of speed, but out of gold. This is why I did all that grinding to raise my uh, fame before I did anything else. So I didn't want to do any more grinding. The party was well rested and fully prepared to travel again. Lorena was anxious to find her mother, but the elves warned her not to disrupt the uh, Elder Druid's most divination ceremony or it would be ruined. After the longest several days in her life, Lorena was finally approached by Mirth herself. The Druid smiled warmly. Well, Lorena says, I have seen her, Mirth says. Lauren Hart's jumped and she rushed towards Mirth with eagerness. She's in a swamp, the swamps north of Grimoire. She was with a man. A man, Lauren asks. My man tra mother travels with no men. I said, that is what I saw. Lauren concluded that her mother was being held captive by this man and that there was no time to lose. I says, I must leave immediately. She walked away from Mirth without another word. The druid squeaked from being left behind and hurried after the princess. I says, please wait, there is much to discuss. Anna walked up and saw the druid tracing her mistress. And says, what's going on? Lauren says, Eleanor, good, be prepared to leave shortly, I'll tell the others. Mirth says, Princess Loren. The princess did not listen and hurried away. Mirth let out a heavy sigh and turned to Eleanor in defeat. She has already heard what she needed to hear and will listen to nothing else. Mirth said, what did you need to ask me to tell her? I'll pass it on for you. Mirth said, it's the sword, the hot plate. Eleanor shifted to give Mirth her full attention. The revelation of the sword had been bothering her too. Mirth said, we found it in such a hurry that I don't believe she realises the importance of that weapon. No, says it may look just like a sword, but you saw how it glowed in her hands. The ancient swords have only glowed for the Greek warriors, whom this world will never know. 
Every person who has ever wielded one of those weapons has changed the world in some significant way. The gods have selected this Amazon princess for some great purpose, and I will not wait in the forest to find out what it is. Oh, says, are you proposing to follow us for the sword? And says, if, if that sword is destined to shape this world, I need to make sure it is, that it is not for the worse. Eleanor asks, do you not trust Loren to handle this responsibility? I says, no, no, I do trust her. I meant, I meant that if she, I hope she does not fall into the wrong hands. Someone could manipulate her to use a sword for evil. Eleanor says, like whom? Like the Empire, of course. Eleanor asks, why would the Empire use a sword for evil? How do you even know that? This is you should know. They wish to strike the elves from existence, and if they had a powerful weapon to do so, they would not hesitate to use it. Just then, an arrow shot through the air between Mirth and Eleanor, lodging in a nearby tree. They both shrieked as if they were under fire, but Eleanor managed to pull out her weapon and defend. Tis, 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 bad girl. Mirth immediately relaxed. She looked into the trees where the unknown voice had come from. Who's there? Eleanor asks, come down. Mirth says, Ray, you know, visitors don't appreciate your random demonstrations of markmanship. And says, Markmanship, he was trying to kill us. Ray says, Rest assured, if I wanted you dead, you'd be so. They still couldn't see what he was, was teasing them, but Murph seemed to know him well. Murph says, Do not mind him. Ray says, No, don't mind the questionable elf on the trees with a loaded crossbow and a remarkable shot. Murph says, Ray. The hidden elves' laughter fell down on them and stopped. They searched the canopy for any sign of him. It grew tense the longer they heard and saw nothing, not a rustle of a branch or even a movement of a leaf. And then suddenly there was rustling from the tree directly above them, and green clad elf jumped down, grinning deviously. Surprise! Mirth watched his arm with her staff. How many times have I told you not to do that? It gives me a headache. Now apologise. Ray sighed and turned towards the tree he had just leapt down from. He yanked out the bolt that he'd wedged into it a moment ago. I'm very sorry, love. I see that I shot you. Did I hurt you much? He leaned towards the trunk and massaged the bark where the bolt had made an indentation. Would you like me to kiss it and make it better? The elf whispered to the tree as his face closed in on it, as if he were really about to kiss it. Merv said, the forest is laughing at you now. Ray looked over at Eleanor abruptly, and her skin rippled mysteriously. Okay. He gave the tree trunk a quick peck of his lips and smiled. Merv says, you're very sweet. Ray says, that's what they all say. Merv pulled him away from petting the tree, and he laughed. Eleanor couldn't help but get the impression they were very intimate with each other. For some reason, Eleanor felt a pang of envy from seeing how the elf smiled at Merv. I says, why are you here? Ray says, you owe me a new target. Murph says, why? Ray says, you know why. Murph frowned from being forced to recall what happened in the desert. I'm sorry it took message from me, but there was an urgent piece of business that required him out of the picture. Yes, we all heard what you told the elders. Ray stepped close to Murph and spoke directly into it here, but we both know he's not really out of the picture, don't we? I says, how did you? Ray says, you think I don't know absolutely everything about my target? What kind of assassin do you take me for? I says, do not tell anyone, Ray, I'm begging you. You know I wouldn't if I didn't, don't have to. Though it would be awful if everyone were to know that the Elder Druid is protecting the Dark Elves rogue leader. Eleanor says, you don't understand. Eleanor pulled Ray's attention away from Mirth. He took a step towards her in the clearing. Ray, it's about time I asked just who I am. Uh, so, Loren says, Eleanor, we're leaving. Eleanor jumped to the sound of her name. Lorena and the rest of the party were standing by, waving her to join them. Eleanor says, I'm sorry, but it's time to leave. Will you be joining the Strood, Mirth? Ray says, hold on, you're leaving? You just got back. Mirth says, this is a very important matter that means peace or war in the world. I must follow Princess Lorena of the Amazons if I wish to really protect the forest. Mirth says, you're sick for months, disappear into the night, steal my prey, and now you're leaving and taking this lovely elf with you on top of all that. Do you hate me that much? It's because I care about you and the elves that I must leave. Do not take it to heart. Nonsense, you're not leaving ever anywhere without me, Ray says. Ray, I'm perfectly capable of taking myself, says Mer. Ray says, yes, but now you have a debt to pay me. I know you'll come across some worthy targets to make it up to me. You can't just leave me empty-handed and walk away. Lauren says, what is this hold-up? We must not waste any more time here. Lauren finally approached with a scowl on her face from being held up. Eleanor says, ah, your majesty, Druid Mirth would like us to follow her on her journey. Our journey. Ren says, you want to leave the forest again? You could hardly breathe in the desert. Ren says, the desert is very dry and devoid of life, so it's especially troubling, but I assure you that I'm comfortable enough outside of the forest to travel with you. Ren says, your magic has proved useful from what I've seen, and I may need your divination in the future, and there are no problems with you travelling with us. And me? Ray asks. Lauren says, excuse me? 
Right, no, you're staying here, Merv says. It says you owe me for Mesfit. Merv says you don't outright disobey your elder sister's orders. I says, for one, you're not my real sister, and yes. Elnor felt like laughing after learning they were acting as two siblings, not two lovers. The knot in her stomach melted away. Merv says, and what about an elder druids? I says, maybe. Aaron says, this is not a vacation. We're headed straight for the unforgiving swamps. Ray's eyes seemed to sparkle from just hearing the destination. After a beat of silence and looking into her brother's pleading eyes, she sighed. Merth, Princess Lerin herself is an unparalleled assassin and master of the crossbow whose help would be invaluable. Ray bowed elegantly before Loren, but she may, remained unmoved. Eleanor knew that it was simply because he was a man standing between her and her mother. Ray says, You seem like a strong woman, capable of giving me plenty of exciting prey to hunt. I would be honoured to fight alongside you. Lauren says, If it would get us to leave this forest any faster, as you wish. Ray perked up as an acceptance, curt as it was. He looked at his sister briefly, and then at Eleanor with a suspiciously confident smile. Laura says, now let's go, my mother is in danger, we should not forget that again. Lauren led the party out of the forest, um, in the direction of the swamps as quickly as she could. She needed to save her mother, and there was no time to spare. We gained Ray as a party member, I'm just levelling him up, as an assassin tree, farming I mean, skill. Leading strike, headshot. Okay, there we go. Lauren would re realise that her hurried approval of Ray's company would come back to haunt her as she now surrounded herself with that yet another man who seemed to try his best to create on her nerves. Still, he had more tact and intelligence than Drake could ever muster, making him obviously more pleasant to have around. Ray and Mirth would reveal themselves in time to be step-siblings raised by the same druid elder. His parents had been killed by Dark Elves and he had been abandoned in the forest. Knowing the Dark Elves played such a cruel role in their lives explained their initial hostility towards Dark Elves and Ray's eventual disapproval of their acceptance back into the forest. You now have more than six party members. Only active members will fight will gain experience from fights and quests. However, you can still level up by alternating the formation and returning to old places such as Vox Lair. It's up to you to decide. You can keep the same party members throughout the game or change them to deciding which character is best suited to battle. As we do need to swap them out, but with some sections of the game, we have to split the party. Oh, we're going to go. Now, I have a word about... Um, Romance options in a minute, but I accidentally click on Ramus, so we have to actually have a dialogue with him first. Anna says, Do your acts have a name? I says, Why do you folks keep asking me that blasted thing ain't got a name? It's Hunger Medal. Friendly. Some people cherish their favourite weapons, since you have both seen hard times. Perhaps even just for good luck. I get why folks name him, Rama says. Do you think I should? Uh, it's not even whole. The gem here fell out a long time ago. If I was going to get all mushy over a weapon, it would be the best. Bla it should be the best blasted weapon there was. Then we'll save the naming process for when you find an axe you can actually respect. All right. Okay, romance options. Dora, not a romance option. Ramos, not a rom romance option. Draco is a romance option for only for, for men. Since we're playing a lady, can't romance him. Uh, Loren is bisexual, so she we can romance her. Mirth, only available to men, so she's not a romance option for Eleanor. And Ray is a romance option for women, so we can romance him. So at the moment we've only got Loren and uh, Ray that we can romance, but we'll have other romance options. And since I've got the expansion pack, that includes even more romance options. But at the moment, we just got two. And I'm not going to talk to anybody you are in the camp. Uh, so... I can't even remember what I was doing now. <laughs> there we go. Inventory, nothing nothing to put in, in his inventory, but we had a staff to put uh, in most inventory. There we go. We're going to the Unforgiving Swamps, I think. Water, mud, slime, fog. This swamp has it all. Jacob sloshed around in the swamp with surprising ease. Eleanor raised an eyebrow. Jacob says, what? Eleanor says, do you enjoy the swamps? Jacob says, didn't you ever make mud pies when you were a kid? Eleanor says, let's just n say not exactly. Merv says, careful, I sent lizardmen nearby. Eleanor says, lizardmen? 
And it says they're capable of regenerating lost limbs, so they will be difficult to kill. It says here they are, get ready to fight. Alright, um, we need to level up Mirth because everybody else is level 5 and she's only level 4. And I want two of every class, so I'm going to take out Dora. So we got two mages, two thieves, and two warriors at the moment. Oh, that um, grinding made this really easier than it should be. Merv right says, should we fall back to camp and get better equipment? Merv well, says, agreed, but we must not delay much longer. Although we didn't need to do that, because we're fine. It's just their journey through the Unforgiving Swamps had been a perilous one. The monsters that lurched in its outskirts made them fear what it would hold in its depths. Merv suffered some depression from leaving the forest, but had otherwise been true to her word that she was perfectly capable of travelling with the princess. Rayon, the complete opposite on the end of the spectrum, was having a ball and he heat of battle. He was come very skillful in taking down enemies with a single shot and revalued his skills. He announced to the party the number of headshots that he'd accumulated to everyone's um, envy. When not in battle, he boasted of his skills and notable hunts, often seeking approval from Eleanor, who merely rolled her eyes. He was only mildly deterred by a disinterest, however. After wading through waist-deep swamp water, neck-deep for Dora and Ramos, they spotted what looked like a hut. The wood was rotted, but it was somehow still standing. Draco says, Is that a house? Who lives in the swamp? Ramos says, Blast, it's about time. We saw some dry land. I need to get out of the sludge. They clambered onto the island and recollected themselves. Recollected themselves, even Ramos emptied the swamp water out of his shoes. Eleanor says, A person who lives in a swamp, Merth, the swamp druids. Merth says, No, unless. I says, Unless what? I said, Nothing, it's unlikely. They approached the front door cautiously. Ramos says, Hello, is anybody in there? There was only silence. So Lorraine opened the door and the party fell in. As if through magic, the deteriorating exterior held a lavish interior. The party was stunned by her. They had almost been tricked into passing it by. Though the hut was empty, it looked like someone had been there recently. Out of the shadows sprang a giant scorpion with its tail flailing. Gilano says, Kill it! Boss fight. It's not difficult, so. Weak to ice. Scorpio scream and scuttled back in the darkness. Loren held up her held, held her hand up to warn the party not to pursue it. The creature's whimpering wafted into sounds that a human would make. I says, I cannot believe it. The scorpion was a woman stepped out in, from the darkness, glaring at the party. It was clear from her condition that she was a scorpion whom they just fought. Loren brandished a sword to warn not to try anything again. A shapeshifter and into a scorpion. That was ugly and mean, Doris says the shapeshifter says they just misunderstood. Loren says, Then why did you attack us? Because I would rather die than fall into the hands of the elves. They would seek to purify me and strip me of who I am. Merv says, The purification rituals were done for your own good. Dark magic is vile and dangerous. It must be cured. Shepard says, You wish to cure me? I am diseased. You have broken into my home. I'm not hurting anyone way out here, darling. Don't make me show you otherwise. Merv says, Calm down. I have no allegiance to anyone who seeks to hurt you. I am Princess, Princess Lorraine of the Amazons. I am looking for my mother. Lorraine says, I know she was brought into this forest by a man, but I do not know where. Lorraine says, you are from here. Can't you help us? The dark wish twisted her mouth as she examined the party members one by one. She walked up in front of Lorraine and stared her dead in the eyes. Lorraine followed deep shiver, but held her ground and did not waver. Lorraine says, what are you doing? An aura that started to appear quickly faded away. She says, you are not lying. Lorraine says, of course I am not. Did you just use your magic on me? She says, I had to make sure that you weren't lying, filth. It turns out you're not, so no harm done. 
And it says, don't ever use magic on me again or you'll find your head separated from your body. The Dark Witch blinked. No worry, that's usually how she prevents people, Draco says. I says, wait, you can read people's minds. The shapeshifter says, the perks of using so-called dark magic. Ray says, I would say death is pretty dark, wouldn't you? The shapeshifter says, death is just another stage of being. So many people flee from it as if it was a bad thing. Being dead can be quite fun, actually. She waved her hand and a skeleton of a jackalope on her table started to move. It hopped off the furniture and ran around on the floor. Dora and Draco screeched when it hopped around their feet. Rama says the dead should rest, not dance a merry jig whenever you want. The skeleton suddenly stopped the quick hand gesture from the shapeshifter. Rama says I have no opinions on your magic. I need only to save my mother. Can you help me find her? I would reward you handsomely. The shapeshifter says keep your outside baubles. I don't need anything other than what I already have. She just says, I'll help you find your mother, but only because I want my peace and quiet back. Too many people are walking around the swamps like they've been renamed the Forgiving Swamps of Roses. Oh, says, you'll help? Really? The ship just says, yes, unlike filth, I don't lie for recreation. And says, what is your name, Dark Witch? We have not had a proper introduction. My name is Chambara, though I do consider a good fight as a standard greeting down days. I won't apologise for attacking you, since I'm usually one being ambushed. She says, we don't look at Mirth, who swallowed in fear. It says, very well, Chambara, you can help us nav navigate the terrain and look for tracks. Chambara says, I don't need to go anywhere. And says, but you said you do, you, that you'd help. Chambara says, I can and I will, but let me complete my thought, if you don't mind. <laughs> Outsiders. Lauren says, how will you help us then? Chambara says, I have a potion that can tell me where anyone is in the swamps very accurately. Eleanor says, it's like druid most divination. Chambara says, no, not like a druid. Frog got some divination. I have omniscience. I don't just see things, I know things. Much better, I assure you. Mirth blushed but held her tongue. Aaron says, Great, perform your ritual, make your potion, whatever you need to do, do it. Chambara says, Not so fast, I need the proper ingredients first. I don't just stock up on useless potions, hoping for strangers to stumble through my door looking for their lost mothers. Aaron says, Of course, this couldn't be easy. Aaron says, Fine, what do you need? Chambara says, I need the tooth of the lizard man, it's the most potent for what I require. Aaron says, We have plenty of those just lodged in our armour already. Chambara says, Not just any lizard man's tooth, let me finish. Must be from a large dominant lizard, the cream of the crop. He's fed the most and is the strongest, and so on and so forth. In short, only a lizard king will do, and he never leave the tribal grounds of the temple of Shizu live nearby. That will not be a problem, I said. So we'll return shortly with your tooth. Chambara says, get out there already. So, before we go any further, Chambara is also a love interest. We can recruit her later, and she's bisexual. She's a part of the expansion pack. So, that's the end of this episode. Hi, this is Fo. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, comment, and if you really liked it, please subscribe.